Welcome to Microchips Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. Hyundai doubles down on hydrogen to reach carbon neutrality. Tata, Adani and Reliance rush to Modi's home turf of Gujarat. The Globe stars and dogs for the week. U.S. House China panel calls Intel, NVIDIA and Micron heads to testify. China chip imports fall in 2023 on economic headwinds and localization efforts. Hyundai doubles down on hydrogen to reach carbon neutrality. Yahoo! Hyundai has announced plans to produce hydrogen from animal waste and plastics as part of its ambition to own the entire hydrogen stack. The firm, which already holds the largest market share of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, said it would also use the fuel for steel production and other industries. However, hydrogen has been slow to take off due to a lack of infrastructure and the fuel's high cost. Hyundai said it would aim to bring down costs over time, but subsidies would be necessary in the early stages. Tata, Adani and Reliance rush to Modi's home turf of Gujarat. Nikkei Asia. Indian conglomerates, including Tata Group, Adani Group, and Reliance Industries, have announced large-scale investments in the state of Gujarat. Tata Group plans to build a semiconductor fab in Dalara, while Adani Group intends to invest 2 trillion Indian rupees, $24.1 billion, in the state over the next five years. Reliance Industries aims to contribute to Gujarat becoming a global leader in green growth. Gujarat, the home state of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, has been a key investment destination due to its robust infrastructure and close ties to the central government. The Globe Stars and Dogs for the Week The Globe and Mail Shares of Griffles SA, a drug company, took a hit after a short seller's report caused concerns. The stock price dropped as a result. U.S. House China panel calls Intel, NVIDIA and Micron heads to testify. Financial Times The U.S. House of Representatives China Committee has asked the CEOs of Intel, NVIDIA, and Micron to testify before Congress as part of its increased scrutiny of companies with interests in China. The committee has become more interested in having the chipmakers testify since the CEOs of Intel, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm lobbied against the Biden administration's plans to tighten semiconductor-related export controls. The move comes as the committee aims to increase the political pressure on companies with significant operations or sales in China. China chip imports fall in 2023 on economic headwinds and localization efforts. South China Morning Post. China's imports of integrated circuits, IC, decreased in volume and value in 2023, reflecting economic headwinds and efforts to boost local production. China imported 479.5 billion IC units worth $349.4 billion last year, down 10.8% in volume and 15.4% in value from 2022. This decline was influenced by weak smartphone and laptop sales, as well as China's efforts to reduce reliance on imported chips. China is making progress in boosting local output of legacy chips to meet domestic demand, and currently has 44 semiconductor wafer fabs in operation, with a further 22 under construction. The country's global share of mature process capacity is expected to reach 39% by 2027, up from 31% in 2023. Five investors on their biggest takeaways from 2023. CNN. Investors have learned several key lessons from the market in 2023 that will shape their outlook for 2024. One of the key lessons is not to underestimate the American consumer, who continued to spend robustly despite rising interest rates. Another lesson is that history cannot always be relied upon to predict the future, as evidenced by the fact that the yield curve inversion did not lead to a recession as expected. Additionally, investors should not fight the Federal Reserve, as the central bank's influence on markets is significant. Lastly, investors should diversify their portfolios beyond the magnificent seven tech stocks and focus on fundamentals, as earnings growth will need to justify valuations in 2024. At CES, legacy automakers scramble to keep up in AI arms race. The Globe and Mail. Established automakers are working to catch up to Tesla and other new rivals in developing software-defined vehicles that offer digital features to consumers, according to executives and analysts at CES. The transition to software-driven cars is challenging as vehicles require higher standards for durability and safety than phones, and digital technology companies often test their technology on customers before it's ready for sale, which is not the norm in the auto industry. Automakers are making changes to their IT infrastructure and manufacturing lines to allow for faster software development and over-the-air updates, but matching Tesla's capabilities has proven difficult. EU antitrust chief meets Apple, Alphabet, and Qualcomm chiefs. Yahoo! 
The EU antitrust chief Margrethe Vestager has said that she has recently met with the CEOs of Apple, Alphabet and Qualcomm to discuss the regulation and compliance of competition policy. Vestager has confirmed that she spoke to the Apple CEO about the company's obligation to allow its apps to be distributed outside of its app store and the competition cases it currently faces. The Alphabet CEO and Vestager spoke about the design of choice screens and the Google AdTech antitrust case, whilst it is unclear what was discussed with Qualcomm. Hello there, my dear viewers. It's your friendly neighborhood Dr. Six, coming to you from the vibrant and ever-exciting Six Degrees world. As always, I'm here to bring you the latest news and give you my unique take on what's happening in the world. So, let's dive right in. Hyundai, the Korean automotive giant, is going all in on hydrogen as it strives to achieve carbon neutrality. They've got big plans to produce hydrogen from animal waste and plastics, and even use it for steel production and other industries. Now, hydrogen has had a slow start due to infrastructure limitations and high costs. But fear not, Hyundai is determined to bring down those costs over time. And let's be honest, who doesn't want to drive a car powered by animal waste? It's eco-friendly and it adds a whole new meaning to the term horsepower. In other news, some of India's biggest players, including Tata, Adani, and Reliance, are rushing to invest in Gujarat, the home turf of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Gujarat is known for its robust infrastructure and close ties to the central government, making it an attractive investment destination. Tata Group is planning to build a semiconductor fab, while Adani Group has pledged a whopping $24.1 billion in investments over the next five years. And Reliance Industries wants to turn Gujarat into a global leader in green growth. Looks like Modi's got some serious competition on his own turf. Now, let's take a trip across the pond to the US, where the House China panel is calling in some big tech CEOs to testify. Intel, Nvidia, and Micron are all being summoned as part of the committee's increased scrutiny on companies with ties to China. The committee wants to put pressure on these companies, especially after they lobbied against the Biden administration's plans to tighten export controls on semiconductors. It's like a high-stakes game of congressional poker, and these CEOs are being called to reveal their hand. Speaking of semiconductors, China's chip imports have taken a hit. Economic headwinds and efforts to boost local production have led to a decline in both volume and value of imported integrated circuits. China is working on boosting its own chip production to reduce reliance on imports, and they've got a whopping 44 semiconductor wafer fabs in operation, with even more under construction. Looks like China is flexing its semiconductor muscles and aiming for a bigger slice of the global chip market. Watch out, world! Now, let's shift gears and talk about investors and their lessons from 2023. One big takeaway is not to underestimate the American consumer, who kept on spending despite rising interest rates. Another lesson is that history doesn't always repeat itself, as the dreaded yield curve inversion didn't lead to a recession as expected. And let's not forget, investors should never fight the Federal Reserve. Their influence on the markets is no joke. And finally, diversification and focusing on fundamentals are key to navigating the ever-changing market landscape. So, remember, folks, don't put all your eggs in one tech basket. At the Consumer Electronics Show, CES, legacy automakers are scrambling to catch up to Tesla and other digital-savvy rivals. They're racing to develop software-defined vehicles that offer all the latest digital features. But it's not an easy task. Cars have to meet higher standards for durability and safety than your average smartphone, and digital tech companies often test their products on customers before they hit the market. Automakers are making changes to their infrastructure and production lines, but it's a tough race to match Tesla's capabilities. It's like trying to catch a speeding electric bullet. Last but not least, the EU antitrust chief, Margrethe Vestager, has been busy hobnobbing with some big names in the tech world. She recently met with the CEOs of Apple, Alphabet, and Qualcomm to discuss competition policy and regulation. With Apple, they talked about the company's obligation to allow app distribution outside of its app store and the ongoing competition cases. With Alphabet, they chatted about choice screens and the Google AdTech antitrust case. As for Qualcomm, well, we're not sure what they talked about, but I'm sure it was riveting. And there you have it, my dear viewers. That's a wrap on today's news. Remember, the world is a wild and wacky place, but here at 6 Degrees, we've got you covered. Now, it's time for you to join the discussion. What are your thoughts on Hyundai's hydrogen ambitions? Are you surprised by China's chip imports decline? And do you think legacy automakers can catch up to Tesla in the AI arms race? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the 6 Degrees of our fascinating world. Thank you for tuning in.
The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.